G'day and welcome to Gearbox, which today is just slightly more disconnected from reality and also our camera cabling uh, than usual. John? We've gone completely uh, disconnected here. We're testing out the new Sennheiser XS wireless system of radio mics and basses. We are. John, you're on the uh, Omni lapel version. There's also a guitar cable and a headset model available mm -hmm. in the system you're using. And two handhelds. Two handhelds. I've got the one with the 835 series capsule, which is actually made in Germany, and uh, the condenser version as well. Mm. They go with these bases, which you can see right here. Um, very easy to set up straight out of the box. Uh, on the back is an XLR connector, a 6.5mm connector, a switch that selects mic or line, and a squelch control. You plug in the power pack, you connect the antennae, and you press the button, you're off. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, as simple as it gets. There's a scan function, so the receivers can find a free channel within a group, and then uh, they can sync wirelessly over 2.4 gig to the handheld or the transmitters and um, the frequency management's uh, pretty easy. It's, 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 mm. I think that actually speaks quite, quite showingly of the market this is aimed at. Mm. Um, not only the ease of operation, but the price. Look, the, the, the price is incredibly low. The price is incredibly low. The unit I'm talking on is $529 retail. RRP, including GST. And you could probably go and hit a, you know, for me price on that. This is clearly aimed at the people who wouldn't be spending big bucks on lots and lots of channels. We're talking about schools, churches, clubs, community radio stations, musos, people who want something that works and is reliable and has enough features and keeps them out of trouble, but doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles that they're just not going to use in practice. Yeah, that's and that's that's a really good good point, John, because you know, on these transmitters, there's no menu system like we see on the Evolution mm. series, for instance. There's just a, a mute button, mute, uh, a power button, and inside, in this case, and on the side, on that one, uh, there's a sensitivity adjustment. Yeah, the sensitivity adjustment is actually quite useful. It's in 10 dB steps. So if you discover you're in trouble, it's not a matter of you know, pull the back off and run around, find a menu, and tweak break something. Break a little potentiometer. Yeah, that thing. It's like go in, switch. Okay, does that sound good? Right, back up the front and, and off you go. Yeah, they run on double A's, fairly standard sort of runtime. Mm. Now there are some differences between this and Evolution. Evolution, obviously, the next up, next step up in the price point. Evolution's got higher output power. These transmitters are only 10 milliwatts, but that's enough for most applications for a lot of people. Yeah, I think you, you said you you tested it out to 100. Meters. Meters. Yeah, we got we got like 100 meters in open air. So if you yeah. if you plonk your receivers at side of stage, um, I think you'd you'd probably do fairly well with these. I wouldn't use them like as hosting mics on uh, a football stadium, but no, no. But they're going to work yeah. in in the front of a conference room. They're going to work on a stage. They're going to work where the distance isn't terribly far. They're going to work for a musician who's almost right next to the amplifier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the frequency range is not also is not as wide as evolution. Mm. We've got a 24 megahertz tuning range from 614 to 638 meg, mm. um, but that's that's okay. Within that, you get eight blocks of 12 channels, which are factory determined to avoid intermod problems. And yeah, um, yeah it's it's simple. Hey. And, and let's let's just not underestimate the importance of intermods, intermodulation. That is one of the, the biggest traps for the unwary where you select channels and the channels conflict. You think it's something interfering from outside but it's actually your own microphones it's your own gear conflicting with, with each itself. other. This fixes that problem very, very smartly. Provided it, you follow the directions. Provide, yes. Read the instructions, take as directed, consult Jimmy if you're in any trouble. Um, looking at, at these units, they're already set up for rack mounting. They can be mounted side by side. They can be stacked vertically. They, they can be just mounted as a, as a single unit. They can just sit on top of each other like we're doing with and them the here. And the only thing that I think Sennheiser could have maybe done with this is put little dips in the top of each unit so that the feet on the one above sit there and they don't move. They're pretty stable, but if you had a stack of, you know, like eight of these, uh, not in a rack, it, it might benefit from being more secure. But that said, easy to use, and the only control on the front, apart from the scan button, is the volume knob. So you can use that as a very quick way to adjust the output level from a particular channel. Having a plan involving Y chords and a complete absence of mixes. <laughs> it's a bad plan. <laughs> don't do it. Don't um, do that. 
On that note of using multiple receivers, these are actually compatible with the evolution range of antenna splitters. So mm. if you wanted to build a multi-channel system, you could, but I don't think that's what most people are gonna do. I think this is gonna hit really strong in sort of the, the musician market, the yeah. schools, the churches, and the small venues that just want a couple of receivers. So And it's light enough to pop into a backpack and, and take off with yeah, you. Really easy to deploy. There you go, Sennheiser XS Wireless.